minus negative 10 y. Yeah, I, I would. I would get y squared minus 5y minus 5y. That gives me minus 10y and then the plus 25. But you might be thinking, well, what happens if I just do the same thing? Well, in this case, yeah, we'd eliminate the middle terms, but look, would I get plus 25 or minus 25 out of this one? That wouldn't be the same thing. This would be the y squared minus 25. This one is not factorable. This one stays just like it is. You can't do anything with that as far as factoring goes. You're just done. How many people understood that feel okay about the fact that we can't factor some things? Okay. Do you feel okay about the two terms? First thing we do is we factor out Greenwich Common Factor. Next thing we do, we see if it's a difference of squares. If it is, then great. We're going to deal with a lot of difference of squares. If it's not a difference of squares or a difference of cubes or a sum of cubes, you leave it alone because you can't do anything with it. Let's move on to the three terms. Now, you'll notice on your notes from last time, the first thing we do is we check for a greatest common factor. So let's do that now. We have three terms here separated by those minuses. Do we have a greatest common factor? What we mean by that is a number or a variable or an expression that is common to all three of these, that divides all three terms. Do we have that? Okay, so we've got to move on. Next thing I told you to do is you count the number of terms. Greatest common factors first, but you count the number of terms after that. How many terms do we have again? Three. Okay. If we have three terms, could it possibly be a difference of squares, a difference of cubes, or a sum of cubes? What do you think? Well, how many terms did all those have? Two. Do we have two terms here? How many terms do we have? So that means the difference of squares and the sum of cubes and the difference of cubes are all off the table. Those are things that have two terms. If you have three terms, there's really only one thing we can do. We can use what's called the diamond method. You may have heard of this something else before. I'm going to show you how to do the diamond method. Are you ready for this? Are you sure you're ready? Nod your head if you're ready. Are you awake today at 7.09 okay. 42 seconds? Okay, we're going to get away because diamond method is awesome. <laughs> Here we go. So diamond method, what you do is you create, it's really not a diamond, it's like an X. It's really just a graphic organizer that helps you organize these numbers in a way that you can, you can see them. Here's what we do. First thing, thing i got to tell you is every single trinomial, that's just a three-term polynomial like we have here, is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Have you, have you ever seen that before? Yeah. Okay. Here's a cool thing. These right here, these numbers are called coefficients. And we're going to be able to use those to help us factor. And in the future, we're going to be able to use those to help us solve these equations when we get back to equations. Here's what I'd like you to do. What I want you to do right now is tell me, in this polynomial, what is the B expression? Can you tell me what the B is? It goes with the sign. It goes with the sign in front of it. So what's the, what's the B? Very good. How much is the C? What about the A? Is it zero or is it one? one? Yeah, if it was zero, this thing wouldn't even be there, right? But remember, when, when you don't have a number up front, it's implied to be a one. So we can identify our A is one, our B is negative five, our C is negative 24. Here's what I want you to do. What we're going to do is we're going to put our B term here. And just so this makes us a little bit easier in the future, we're going to put our A term times our C term there. So let's move down here and let's actually try this with this example. What are we going to put up here again? Up here at the top? B. B which is what? Negative Just the numbers. Just the numbers. Negative 5. Okay, what are we going to put down here? We're going to put our A times C. What is our A? 1. That really, when you multiply that, that's not really doing a whole lot. But I'm going to show you why we do this in the future, okay? I'm just setting you up for the future here. Uh, what is our C? Negative 24. So we're going to put 1 times negative 24. How much is that? Negative 24. We're going to put that in there. Raise your hand if you're still with me. See where those numbers are coming from. 
Okay, so our B here, our A times our C here, and here's what you do. What you try to do now is you think of two numbers that at the same time add to this one and multiply to this one at the same time. So we're looking to add to this and multiply to this. Now don't say it out loud. I want everyone to think about it because this is really the hard part of factoring is thinking of these numbers. It may sound weird that thinking of these numbers is the hard thing, but really this, this process will work for all these trinomials if they're factorable. All you have to do is be able to think of the numbers that add to negative 5 in this case and multiply to negative 8. I'll give you about 10 seconds. Just think about them in your head. Don't say them out loud. If you have them, great. Write them down if you'd like. If you don't have them, think about it right now. And I'll give you some hints about this. The signs of the numbers really tell you what you can and you can't have. For instance, uh, do you notice how we're trying to multiply to a negative number? Do you guys see that? That means the numbers we're going to be putting here and here have to be different signs. Do you see why? Yeah. Can't both be positive, right? Because when you multiply two positives, you get a positive. That's not going to work. Can't be two negatives, because you multiply two negatives, you get a positive. That can't work. So these signs have to be different. You with me? Also, the bigger number, I'm talking absolute value-wise, the bigger number must be negative, because when we're adding them, we're still getting a negative. That should really clue you in on what these two numbers are. Have you found them out yet? Okay. Two numbers I'm thinking of that could possibly be 24. Well, we're thinking 6 and 4, right? Well, that can't add to that. 24 and 1, no. 12 and 2, no. The only other ones that are going to work are what? 8 and 3. One of them's got to be negative. One of them's got to be positive because of that. So we're going to write down 8 and 3. Which one has to be negative here? Yeah, because we're adding and getting a negative there. Are you still with me on this? Now, here's what's kind of nice about it. When your A is 1, when your A is 1, you're pretty much done with this process. This is awesome. You already factored this. You see, these two numbers right here tell you what to write in, those, in the parentheses we're about to create. Remember, when we factor, we're actually creating parentheses. Remember how we factored these? We got a, we got a two parentheses out of this. We're going to do the same thing here. Just like we factored with our difference of squares. Notice how we had our y squared minus 4 squared. We put a y here and a y here. We're going to put a y here and a y here. Guess what we have to put next? Numbers on the side. Exactly what you found right here. That's why this is kind of nice. The diamond method works so well for us. It gives you a graphic organizer to organize these numbers. It doesn't really matter where you put the negative 8 and where you put the 3. It could be reversed. Doesn't matter because multiplication is commutative. Doesn't matter those order those factors. So here we're going to put, since it was negative 8, we're going to put minus 8. Since it was positive 3, we're going to put plus 3. And we've just factored our very first trinomial. Hey, can you check your work, by the way, on this thing? How would you check your work? Foil. Foil. Sure. Just distribute that and we'll see if it works. Let's try that one time. I'm not going to be distributing a whole lot of these, but if we did distribute, we'd get y squared, we would get plus 3y, we would get minus 8y, and we would get minus 24. Is that going to work out to what we started with? It means we factored it correctly. So we have this thing done. How many people understand the diamond method? Good. I would like to give you one on your own to just to practice this. See that you can set it up, see that you can put the numbers in the appropriate places here, and then factor it. By the way, if you're very good at factoring, you always know how to factor. This is just like, okay, this is really easy. Do you need the diamond method? No. Again, it's like using tools, all right? I think I've, maybe I've said this before in this class, but you can build a house with a rock, right? Can't you? Instead of a hammer, can't you just use a rock and hammer and nails? It's probably pretty hard. If I give you a hammer, you can hit those nails a lot better, right? This is like your hammer. If you want to go a different way and something you, you know or have used before, uh, you can use that. What I'm giving you here are tools. Okay, if you choose to use those tools, it'll probably make your life a little bit easier. You understand the, the analogy there? 
So I'm giving you some tools to use. Use this tool if you'd like. It will really help you out. Okay, but as we're doing this one, I'll be walking around the room. If you need help, let me know because this is really important things that you need to know how to do. If you're struggling on this factoring that we've already done, I'll try to help you out with that, okay? So why don't you give this one a try? We'll do x squared minus 7x plus 12. You're going to use the diamond method on this. You set the diamond. You put the B term on top, A times C on the bottom. Then you think of the two numbers that add to the top and multiply to the bottom. After that, you're done. That's the really hard part. Then we write uh, the whatever variable we have plus or minus those two numbers. Remember, you can always check, at least in your head, at least in your head, check to see if it distributes correctly. Uh, it'd be a shame for you to know how to do this and make a simple mistake on the test. And this is wrong because you factored wrong. That would suck. And we're going to start on this here real quick. You're still working? Great. Keep working. What number goes on the top of our diamond here? Good. Very good. You included the sign. That's awesome. What number goes here? Good. Now, I don't want you just to just say this one. I want you to really be thinking it's multiplied by whatever number's here. In this case, it just happens to be a 1. That's how we're still getting the 12. Are you guys with it on that? Mm -hmm. This is going to change in just a second. I'm going to show you how, how this is going to help us. And then we think of two numbers. Again, the thinking of the two numbers, that's the important part for you. And there's some keys to learning how to do that. Because we're multiplying to a positive, we know that these have to both be positive or both be negative. Both be negative. Why? Yeah, exactly. They're adding the, the negative number. Uh, so, what are they? Three and four. going to be. Of course, we're going to make them both negative, and we're going to check this. If this is right, the next step is going to be right. So, negative four plus negative three is negative seven. Is that true? Yeah. Negative four times negative three is positive twelve. Then we're done. What we're going to do now is factor this the rest of the way. Just show our work, really. What are we going to write inside of our two parentheses? X minus 4x. Good. We have a variable x, so we are going to use our x. And we're just going to put the minus 3, minus 4. You can check it with distribution. That one's going to work out. How many people got that one? Fantastic. That's really good. Very, very good. Now, of course, this begs the question, what happens if the A is not a 1? How do you do that problem? Before I answer that, I have to talk about factoring by grouping. Does it matter? Um, I know that it did for the first problem, but does it matter what order those go in? You mean the, uh, the these two? Yeah. It does not matter the order, huh? Because if you switch these around, multiplication is commutative, right? Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter which one we have first. The same thing happens here. If those were backwards, it wouldn't make a difference at all. That's a great question. Thank you for that. So, like I said, I have to show you how to factor by grouping because we're going to use that in the next